We are back to concurrency, but in this lesson, we are going to learn to do it in a truly functional way with Scala futures and promises. I'm Daniel, let's get right to it. Right, back to the ID. Let's create a new Scala application specifically for this lesson in the part three concurrency package, where I click new Scala class, and let's call this futures and promises. Make this an object as usual and make it extend. app. So let's talk about futures. Now futures are a functional way of computing something in parallel or on another thread. So say for example I have a small method that does a very long computation like calculate the meaning of life which is an int and uh, we all know that this, this is 42 but uh, say for example that this thing also sleeps for two seconds simulating a long computation and returns, returns 42. Now the way that I would run this method on a thread by using a future would be something like creating a future object. So I would say future the same way I would construct a try object and I would need to import Scala concurrent future. And I would pass inside this code block, calculate meaning of life. So what this thing does is it creates a future object, a future instance, by calling the apply method from the companion object of the future trait. And inside, I pass here the expression that I want to delegate to another thread. So this calculates the meaning of life on another thread. Now, a little technical caveat. If I try to run this, you'll see this compiler error here. So it says, cannot find an implicit execution context. You might pass an implicit execution context parameter to your method or import Scala concurrent execution context implicits global. Now, what the heck does that mean? Well, if we take a look at the futures apply method, we have access to the sources. So we can see the apply method takes the expression, which we have passed already, but the apply method also takes another parameter list, which contains an implicit parameter. We're going to talk about implicit parameters later in this course, but basically the compiler is complaining that it cannot find a value here for the execution context to inject here at the second parameter list. So the way that we're going to fix that is write a manual import, which is important for futures. So we're going to write import Scala concurrent execution context dot implicits with capital I global. Now global, if we uh, command click or control click, it says val global. So this is an implicit val of type execution context of a given implementation. So the compiler basically looks for this value here to inject into the second parameter list of the apply method for future. Now, if you're really curious about what an execution context is, it basically handles thread allocation of futures. You can create one yourself, but that's in really rare cases. So we'll skip that and just follow the import path. So if we get back to our little source, once we set import Scala concurrent this guy, then the value here global is available here to be injected by the compiler. Which is passed by the compiler. We're going to have a really deep look into how implicits work and how the compiler looks for values. But right now, uh, all that I want you to do is import this guy and we should be set for creating futures. So if I right click and run this again, I should be seeing the calculate the meaning of life and um, uh, this program should run well. But of course, I haven't printed anything yet. So let's take a look at the value contained in a future. So like we said, a future is a computation that will hold a value which is computed by somebody, that is by some thread, at some point in time. That's why it's called a future. Now, if you come from the Java world, you might be familiar with the concept of a future and you might be tempted to do something like print line a future dot get or dot value in this case. But this guy will return something very interesting. 
it will return none, which is an option. In particular, it will return an option of try of int because this is a future int if you hover over a future this is a future which will hold an int at some point in time but when you call the value method it will return an option with a try of int that's because the future might have failed with an exception and the future might not have finished at this point which is why it returns an option so let's instead wait for the future by printing something to the console let's say waiting on the future and instead use the value of the future when the future actually completes and there is a method to do that with a future dot on complete and on complete takes a try int as an argument because when the future completes it will complete with a try int that is the future might have failed with an exception inside so we're going to pass in a try which is of type try int and let's pattern match it by saying k success, let's call this meaning of life, and let's also import the success case class from Scala Util, and uh, then let's print it out. So print line saying the meaning of life is meaning of life, meaning of life. And in case uh, the future uh, through an exception, we'll get a failure from scala util with an exception. And we're just going to say print line I have failed with whatever exception might be contained within. So if we run this again, we are going to see none and waiting on the future, but the uh, JVM main thread will complete before the future completes. So let's uh, force a little sleep here so that we make sure, let's wait for three seconds, uh, so that we make sure that the future actually completes and has the chance to run this callback. And um, let's run this again. So we have none and waiting on a future, and after two seconds, we uh, find the meaning of life is 42, and then the main JVM thread is finished. Now, of course, we can simplify the syntax. If you take a look at t arrow t match, and if you remember the partial functions lecture, this is actually the prototype of a partial function. So we can simply say a future on complete and pass it a partial function with the two cases here. Now, two things to note about this onComplete method here. If we hover over it, we see that the return type is unit here. And although the partial function may return a value of some type, and onComplete is uh, type annotated with a type parameter u, the type u here is not very useful. So keep in mind that onComplete returns unit, so it's used for side effects. So that's one thing. Now, the second thing, which is more important, onComplete or this callback here, will be called by some thread. It may be this thread that created the callback, it may be the thread that ran the future, it may be some other thread, but we do not make any assumption on which thread actually executes this partial function. Now, in parallel programming, of course, we constantly strive to not make any assumptions, so please keep this in mind. All right, so now that we know what futures are and how to handle them, let's get back to the next video where I'm going to dive deeper into a more complex example and we'll learn some nifty tools and tricks for handling and operating on futures. And I am waiting.